I had the opportunity to interview Tay Moore, the 2019-2020 Louisiana 4-H state president. In this interview, Tay and I discussed his 4-H experiences, how today's youth should respond to today's challenges, and the role that 4-H plays in developing the youth of Louisiana. Enjoy. So hello to everybody that's listening. We have a very special guest with us today, Mr. Tay Moore. Tay, if you could just start out by introducing yourself to all of our listeners out there. Yes, um, my name is Tay Moore, as he said. In this past year, I served as the 2019-2020 Louisiana 4-H state um, program president. I have been involved in 4-H since the fourth grade and have served on the executive board for the past four years. And so it was a great opportunity for me to serve this past year. That's really awesome. Um, we're glad to have you. And so just tell us a little bit about your background and your history. Yes, so I started 4-H in the fourth grade. I went to Ringgold Elementary and 4-H was the only four was the only club that was available to elementary students then and I believe it's the same now it's the only club that's available and so our, our teacher made sure that everyone in the class joined 4-H she probably wanted a little break you know but I don't think she ever realized that it makes such an impact in my life and so I would be involved with cookery contests small things going to 4-H camp through elementary and then in junior high I attended 4-H university for the first time and was introduced to the executive board and my agent um, kind of, I guess, made me run to be a regional representative. And I was elected as a regional representative and stayed active on the board in different offices. My project focus throughout 4-H was leadership and leadership development and civic engagement. And so I've always been involved in service learning projects here in my community and across the state. And 4-H has really given me the opportunity to grow as a leader and really hone in on my communication skills, which was a true problem for me. Yeah, um, I definitely understand where you're coming from. I know that in Elton, which is where I live, it's a very small town, so we don't have many opportunities, but the few that we do have, we have to take advantage of. So I understand uh, what you mean when you said that 4-H was the only program um, at Ringgold. So because of that reason, turned out, what, what were you saying? Oh, so because of that reason, would you say that's like why you joined? Yes, I can credit that with being the reason why I joined. If there would have been more options, there's no telling where I would have been. But it's amazing how the only thing that was available turned out to be enough and even more. I mean, all the options opportunities that I've had through 4-H, no other organization, you know, other than organization like 4-H and FFA can give young people the opportunities to really grow as a leader and show others that youth voice matters. So why did you choose to run for state 4-H office and what was your experience like as the state 4-H president? Now, I do know that you served as a state officer three times, correct? Is that yes, right? That's right. That's <laughs> right. Okay. I remember at my Forge, at Forge University, right before my sophomore year, um, I think you were running for vice president and your speech was, it was about that song. It was like, there ain't no mountain higher. Nope. And that, <laughs> that really struck me, like it, it stuck with me, you know? Yes. So just tell us a little bit about why you ran for state office. Yes. So as I said, my 4-H agent, actually my second year going to 4-H University, really pushed me to run for regional representative. Um, I guess my quote unquote older sister, Brittany, was on the executive board. She eventually became president, too. But Miss Liz saw something in me that I did not see in myself. She saw leadership potential in me and this opportunity, I guess, for th this kid, such, just like you, you know, from a small town to really gain skills. Um, through being a state officer. And so I ran to be a regional representative and I and I won. And then the next year I was the state, um, I ran to be the state historian reporter. I'd done some work um, with Facebook and here working with the mayor's office in town. And so I, I thought, you know, well, I can, I can promote the program on social media. I can do that. And so I ran to be historian reporter and got it the next year. Um, I ran to be vice president the opportunity. We have junior leadership conference and the opportunity to lead the planning of the tracks, not exactly teaching one yourself, but kind of being the leader for everyone else and making sure they're following the plans and knowing how things are going to run. And then, you know, after being vice president, I realized approaching my senior year, that there was only one thing left to run for, and that was state 4-H president. 
And I mean, I was also a National 4-H Conference delegate. And so things kind of just worked out. I can't say that I always had had this dream of being the state 4-H president, but I did always have this um, this earning to serve the organization and to serve my community. And if that means doing it through 4-H, well, then so be it. You know, if it means that I have to step outside of my comfort zone and run for an office that I never thought I could run, well, then that's what I'll do if that, I guess, creates the ability for me to make huge impact. And so I really just had a passion to serve, and all of this just came along with it. It's a really awesome story. So I know that you mentioned that FFA and 4-H, we're doing all these great and amazing things for youth. And I know I'm a little bit more well-versed yes. in FFA, but I'm not as well-versed in 4-H. So could you just tell us a little bit about the role that 4-H plays in youth development here in Louisiana? Yes, I would say 4-H's role here in Louisiana is to empower young people, young people from all walks of life, young people from every interest, no matter what their um, their hobbies may be, no matter what they choose their project focus to be, you know, we can create a project area for that, or um, we already have one that's there. Um, you know, you know, both of our organizations started with the agricultural industry, and I would like to, I guess, congratulate y'all on staying so well locked in with that and so professional with it all. But 4-H okay. has kind of taken the, um, has kind of taken a step outside of the box, I guess you could say, has really honed in on taking those same skills, you know, the approach from the agricultural starts where, where adults taught young people because they realized that young people would, could go home and have greater impact on their communities. Well, 4-H takes that approach with various different areas and really teaches kids how to be servants and how to serve their communities and take advantage of these opportunities that they wouldn't have elsewhere. I love that. I think that within 4-H, like there's so much diversity. Um, actually, in FFA too, we do have a lot of diversity. And but just yes. with all those different project areas we, that y'all have in 4-H, I really think that's awesome. Um, it you know it really does promote like a lot of different opinions and lot, lots of change. So that's, I like that. And, really awesome. and it really opens, I guess, kids, especially from small towns, to diversity in the world. You know, I wouldn't be able to all the people that I've been able to meet through the 4-H program. I'd never run into those people here in Ringgold. And so it makes youth um, better leaders and it makes them more concerned with the things that are going around in the world because they can relate to those people now. What are your thoughts on how young people today should respond to all of, of the challenges that our world, our state, and our nation are facing? Yes, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. And I think you said a bit of the answer just in that question. We should respond. We can't just sit on the sidelines anymore. I was talking in, a, um, in our 4-H um, leadership camp last Tuesday. And I said this little phrase, you know, you're not the leaders of tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. You're the leaders of today. And I think that young people need to realize that even adults are looking at us and they're going to they're going to be times where they're going to look to us and see what our reaction is to all the things that are going on in the world. So we need to be watchful. You know, we need to do our research into the different um, protests and things that are going on to make sure that we have the right attitude about it, to make sure that we are um, supporting the right cause. And we can do that and still be respectful of other people's causes. Young people today really have an opportunity to show others how they should how they should lead. And I think we can even make up our mind right now that in our generation, we're not going to let these things happen. We're not going to let people continue to feel like their voice doesn't matter and that humanity doesn't matter. We can take a stand and we can do something even as young people, but we've got to make up our minds to do it. I, I completely agree with you with that because I think sometimes like within our generation, people lack gumption. Yes. And when, when I see a person like you, like I really admire just your drive and your motivation to Oh, make a better you. world like that is so awesome yes yes how have your 4-h experiences prepared you for college and your chosen career i know you've had um quite a few of them so just <laughs> tell us a little bit about that <laughs> yes i i I, it's the weirdest thing ever. You know, I never, I'm going to be a bit transparent here. For the longest, I did not know, you know, which college I was going to go to, what career I wanted to pursue. But I knew that I wanted to live a life of public service, you know, and the 4-H organization really had a great deal to do with that. And so I've wanted, I've um, 
established recently that I think I'm going to pursue the medical field. You know, every, waking up every day and living a life where you can help other people, sometimes where they feel like they're at the bottom, you know, you can help encourage them and promote value into them and instill personal worth into them, which the 4-H organization has done for me. And, and 4-H has helped me with preparedness too. One of my greatest weaknesses was procrastination. And through the 4-H organization, I guess I've, I've learned that I really need to do a better job with that. And so I think I'll be better prepared in college. Also with networking with people, the relationships that I've been able um, to create with folks, even this conversation with you, Caleb, you know, you never know one day I may be voting for you for some big office. So 4-H has really helped. And I think it has helped all young people become better citizens. What advice would you give to students who wish to run for leadership roles uh, like 4-H state officer, maybe being a national conference delegate? Yes, my advice would be just like Nike, just do it. I mean, we really have, as young people, we really have nothing to lose. This is our opportunity, you know, to try out things. And being on the state 4 H, being a state 4-H officer, even FFA officer, is an amazing experience to grow as a leader. And if nothing else, to learn more than you knew before you even before you even tried. So I would tell someone to just take a chance at it, you know, and if you don't even get it, all things work out for the good. And there will come up more opportunities, but just keep on trying. But you won't regret it. I've never ran into anybody who said that they regret it joining FFA and 4-H when they, you know, as a young kid. But I, you will run into people who say that they regretted not taking advantage of those opportunities. So don't be one that didn't take advantage of those opportunities. And lastly, so I know you mentioned earlier that 4-H has definitely helped you um, with dealing with procrastination and being prepared. But what's what do you think are some other lessons, maybe something like that was really profound that you that you learned while being a member of 4-H? Yes, um, I think a huge lesson that I learned was true servanthood, servant leadership. And I've tried to model my life after being a servant leader. You look at the 4-H pledge and even the FFA motto, you know, nowhere in there does it say anything about um for the benefit of a singular person, for I, you know, we pledge our head to clear thing, our heart to greater loyalty, hands to larger service for our club, our community, our country, and our world. This life that we live is so far greater than ourselves. 4-H has really taught me that I, that my purpose here is not just to, you know, sustain mass wealth or just to own luxury cars, you know, and be this, have these top, um, leadership roles or whatever and titles. No, but my life is to make an impact in someone else's. When I die, I hope somebody can, they may not remember my name, but hopefully they can remember something that I did to make their life a little better. You know, he really made me feel like I was worth it. He really instilled purpose in me and made me feel like my opinion mattered when other people didn't. And so 4-H has really taught me how to be a servant leader, how to make um, great change in, in the world, we, time is limited, you know, like I said, tomorrow's not promised. And so 4-H has taught me how to take advantage of the day, serving my community, and just loving people. Well, Tay, I think you're doing an awesome job in uh, making an effort to leave that legacy. Uh, and you've proven that to people. I, I, I think I heard that you were, um, you were just named the Louisiana 12th grade state student of the year. So you're doing really awesome things oh, and uh, leaving a, a really um, profound legacy. People are going to have some big shoes to step up into. So, <laughs> well, Tay, I just want to be you. here. Oh, sorry. I just want to thank okay. you so much for uh, speaking with me today. Uh, it was an incredible honor to get to know you a little bit better and to learn your story. And I'm sure all of the people that will be watching this are going to um, really hone in all that advice that you were giving and learn from it. So, thank you so much. Yes, well, thank you much, Caleb, for giving me this opportunity. I wish you the best in your presidency. Congratulations to you for being elected. That, that is amazing. I know you'll do a great job. Thank you.